Hey, podcast friends. If you love our podcast and want to help support us to continue making cool shit, consider joining our Patreon community. Get early access to each episode, a monthly hangout on Zoom, custom answers to your questions in exclusive Patreon videos, and much, much more. Head on over to patreon.com slash conversations with creators to become a patron today. Your support means the world to us. Now on to the episode. Happiness comes before success. In fact, happiness can create your success. Yes. And, and so I, I've, I believe I've lived a life so far that really is all about how can I find my happiness first? My American dream comes from that. Um, and, and, and that, therefore, powers my uh, personal and professional and, and, you know, profit success. Um, I could, I mean, I couldn't agree more. It's like, that's why, <laughs> that's why we're all, all of us entrepreneurs hopefully are doing what we're doing because it makes us happier than anything else. And like, I, you know, I couldn't imagine the office space nine to five. It's just not, not in my, not how I'm built. It's not, not in my DNA. So, you know, the reason that, you know, we go through all the crazy roller coasterness of what, you know, chasing down our, our goals are is because it makes us happier than not doing it. Absolutely. Um, and if you build, I mean, that's, that's how everybody should be building. Absolutely. Like find your happiness first and then build your career around your happiness, not the other way around. Cause you're not going to find happiness if it's just for money. So the big question is this, how are creators like us who aren't built for the nine to five, for the people who put their passion before them being comfortable? How do we turn that passion into a living that pays the bills and a life that we love? That is the question. This podcast will give you the answers. My name is Noah Mittman and welcome to Conversations with Creators. Hello and welcome back to another episode. I am super excited today to be joined by Dr. Pele. Uh, he is a best-selling author, musician, educator, and the founder of Velocity Jam, where he partners with professionals to build uh, social velocity, which turns their authentic content into clients. Uh, he was actually born in war-torn African village, and he has experienced both humble beginnings and the victory of the American dream. So his unique journey has taught him what truly drives success. And it's not who or what we are. It's how we solve the world's problems using happiness and harmony, the music of our lives. And I am super happy to have you on the show. Dr. Pele, welcome. Thank you, Noah. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. You have lived a life, sir. <laughs> and whenever I hear it being talked about by someone else, it still makes me go, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I did all that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what, you know, you, you've been on quite the journey here. What, uh, what got you started into kind of the entrepreneur space and, you know, chasing down that American dream? Well, actually, those are two different questions. Um, yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> the, the American dream is one question. Let me start with the, the entrepreneur one. I remember once I was a vice president of a really big company, actually, sorry, director of marketing at that time, uh, of a really big company called EDS, um, Electronic Data Systems, a company founded by Ross Perot, huge company, multinational. I'm making, you know, multiple six figures and got my big title, got my corner office. One day I sit down to read my email and in the email was this short little note that says, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh, man. In one instant, right? My title, director of marketing. Global. Right, right. <laughs> Gone. My, my, my double, triple six figure salary. Gone. My entire I identity yeah. gone. And I know I wasn't happy that day, but I can tell you it was the happiest day of my business life because it put me on a path to say, you know, if I'm not that title and that income stream that I thought was everything, who am I really? And then I went back to school, got my PhD, went back to software development and all the things I do today. Um, so that's what set me on the entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. Um, you know, but but as far as the American dream thing, that happened way back in Africa in the 60s. When I was a young child, late 60s, uh, there was a, a civil war, the Biafran civil war. Actually, Nigeria and Biafra were, you know, fighting and 
you know, millions of people were dying. Um, we were starving. My mother had no food. We were a refugee camp, running from refugee camp to refugee camp. And my mother, in all of this fear and starvation, did the most amazing thing. In the absence of food, she would simply sing to me. Mm. She would sing about food. And she would take my name, Pele, and put it inside the song and, and create this content that was so powerful that, you know, it made me happy. And I found probably my life's biggest lessons from that event was, number one, happiness can drive away food and hunger. Mm. Uh, the, you know, the fear of dying and, and, and hunger. I mean, happiness has physical powers like that. And I learned from that that happiness comes before success. In fact, happiness can create your success. Yes. And, and so I, I've, I believe I've lived a life so far that really is all about how can I find my happiness first? My American dream comes from that. Um, and, and, and that, therefore, powers my uh, personal and professional and, and, you know, profit success. Um, I could, I mean, I couldn't agree more. It's like, that's why... <laughs> That's why we're all, all of us entrepreneurs hopefully are doing what we're doing because it makes us happier than anything else. And like, I, you know, I couldn't imagine the office space nine to five. It's just not, not in my, not how I'm built. It's not, not in my DNA. So, you know, <laughs> the reason that, you know, we go through all the crazy roller coasterness of what, you know, chasing down our, our goals are is because it makes us happier than not doing it. Absolutely. Um, and if you build, I mean, that's, that's how you, everybody should be building. Absolutely. Like find your happiness first and then build your career around your happiness, not the other way around. Cause you're not going to find happiness if it's just for money. Yeah. Yeah. I know. No, that's interesting though. Like the whole, you know, you had back to the kind of the entrepreneur story, but I mean, that's, that's incredible that, that, you know, happiness and, and just a change of mindset could affect hunger. That's, uh, that's super powerful. Yep. Um, but yeah, like, so I, that's interesting too, because we all have, I think so much like ego writing on that, you know, on the title on I'm an entrepreneur or on what did that teach you losing that? And then kind of building yourself, it sounds like, a, you know, on your own after that. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I asked myself, am I happy? <laughs> and the answer, right. I wasn't happy anyway. <laughs> so what makes me happy? And for me, it really went back to, I was lucky. Uh, let me just say, not everyone gets that lucky. I was lucky that I had a support system, people who I could rely on when I was basically down and out. And they held me up emotionally and psychologically, but I was able to take some time off to go figure myself out. And here's what I learned. I'm a musician. I've been a musician all my life. I've done music professionally. I've, I've done, I've had billboard charting songs uh, on major labels. You know, I produced Alexander O'Neill in the late 1990s, got to number 29 on Billboard's Hot 100. That's so cool. Check it out. I, my name back then was Pele Kazir. Now I'm Dr. Pele, so it's a little bit. Pele. Oh, I mispronounced it. No, I, I, I saw the accent and I messed it up. Yeah, okay, it's cool. <laughs> Dr. Pele. Yeah, right. so I was like, you know, I left that music thing because I was looking for money. But I yeah. realized, you know what? This money doesn't make me happy anyway. So I said, I'm going to go back to music. I'm going to take music and do and follow its follow it to its, its logical and emotional conclusion in my life. So that was the first decision. And I also said, you know, I'm also an educator. My father was a, a, a PhD. And he, you know, he was, he is my example in life. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go back to school. So I went back. I got my master's and I got my PhD. And I, I'm also a software developer, by the way. Guess what? I am a I'm a creative kind of all the things. I'm a you're, you're a creative butterfly like I am. <laughs> and so I went back um, and started using my software development skills, which I had been doing, you know, in bigger companies, using them. And I came up with really three things: music meets software development, um, meets um, you know entrepreneurship, if you will, and, and writing books and all this other stuff. And that's kind of what led me to where I am today. And I'm so happy I made that choice because it really, I, I've, I think I'm really lucky because I found a way to always use what is truly me in what I'm doing. For example, my PhD was on business narrative, which is just a fancy word for content marketing. <laughs> 
content <laughs> business marketing. narrative. That's great. Yeah, business. I was talking about business narrative in an entrepreneurial leadership context. Whatever. Totally. No, it's I love it. The semantics are great. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I've been lucky to use all these different things. So I, I used my PhD is still relevant today. My music, guess what music is? It's content. Oh yeah. Um, I, my music is content, my books, my writing, my teaching, it's all the same thing. And yeah. so now, as you mentioned, I've built Velocity Jam, which is really a place where we bring it all together. I mean, even the title jam, that's from music. Yeah. So I've been really lucky to use all the- Velocity is a great word too. Yeah, velocity, you know, as in motion. Um, so I've been really lucky to use everything that I've seen, even the struggles, the failures, everything is still here with me and is still part of how I try to help the world. Oh, and I love that so much because, you I mean, you are really showing that there's no, you know, you can be, I mean, again, it's, it's kind of the, the like classic thing to say, you can be whatever you want to be, but like, you know, you're doing so many different things. And I think we all get taught especially in entrepreneur world to niche, niche, niche down, do your thing. But like you can really, you know, I, like for me, the, the, the switch. And so starting in video production, being a filmmaker and mm -hmm. now going into coaching, um, I, you know, I was still on a video shoot today. Like I'm still doing, I'm still doing that stuff. Uh, but man, the coaching has really, I, I just, it's a totally different side of my brain and I love it. And seeing the results and seeing the people like get, get you know teaching and get understanding things and and accomplishing things is so fulfilling and cool mm -hmm. um and it's just a yeah like you know your title your whatever you're making doesn't need to just be one thing it can be a whole bunch of different stuff and as long as you know why would you be doing all that stuff if it didn't make you happy so like just you know keep going down the happiness path of like what else seems cool and like could you you know could you work on i, I love that attitude towards it yeah. I mean, another way to look at it is, you know, a lot of people say you should look for your transferable skills, right? Mm -hmm. The skills that you can take from this thing that you do and bring it to this thing. I like to say, look for your transferable passion. Yeah. Because, you know, your, you know, happiness leaves clues. Passion leaves clues. You can actually look at your life and say, okay, huh, I, look at me. I must have done something over there and 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 grab that passion over there and transfer it to the future and yeah. build, build your future intentionally. That's kind of what I've been, as I say, I keep saying lucky to do because the truth is all these things for me come under one umbrella. I'm still in a niche. I'm very much niche when I talk about content marketing on LinkedIn. Yeah. But it just so happens that I can pull in my music. I can pull in my well, right. You're, you're exactly right. Because at literally everything is content. Everything creating, is content. creating is content. If you're making stuff, exactly you're making cool shit, you're making content. You're exactly. making stuff that you believe in that you want to get out there. And however that shows up, like mm -hmm. I've started even, you know, uh, you know, for LinkedIn again, because I'm definitely going harder on that. Um, mm -hmm. but the videos is what I generally work on, but I'm also now doing GIFs and, and working on writing. So like, you know, a GIF that will then have an explanation in writing. I've never been a writer. I mean, I write my scripts for stuff, but I've never, I don't know, but I'm, I'm now enjoying that and like seeing with the lens of like a funny GIF, how I can kind of wrap that in and my copywriting skills are, are coming up and I'm still probably not that good at it, but I'm doing it <laughs> and I'm having fun with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So let's dive into this idea of, and I think we've already, I mean, it's, it's so in line. It's such a great name that you kind of gave me for what you wanted to talk about, but profitable happiness. Mm. What does that mean to you? Mm. So if you think of um, how most people view happiness in companies and even in their own personal lives, it's almost as a, yeah, nice to have you know, right. um, it, people don't really know what happiness is. In fact, a lot of people think happiness is a feeling. It's something that I'm going to wait to feel when I get that. <laughs> yeah. Blah, when, that you, when you're sitting in the hammock in Bora Bora yeah. with the margarita in your yeah. hand. Yeah. When, when yeah. I get that Lamborghini or the airplane <laughs> behind me in my picture, right. <laughs> now that's when I'm going to be happy. But unfortunately, happiness is not something you wait to feel. Happiness mm. is something you do. As my mother did to me, she sang songs, right? Those songs made me happy. They, they were actions that we took. So when you look at happiness as an action, 
it changes everything. Mm. So Maslow's hierarchy talks about how, um, you know, and this is, by the way, been misinterpreted, but, you know, the very first thing you need is a foundation of tangible physical successes. Um, and then it's only later that you get to the happiness part um, at the very top of the pyramid, um, self-actualization. The truth is, I've turned it upside down. In fact, you should start with your self-actualization and your happiness, understand it, define it, and then bring it with you. Because one day when you're at the top of the mountain and you're successful, you don't want to look around and say, oh, I'm not happy. <laughs> right. Money, but I can't find my happiness. Exactly. Well, for me, profitable happiness is really a lifelong mission to bring the two together for myself and to teach other people how to do that using online marketing and business coaching, which is what I do. I'm a coach yeah. um, and, and so on and so forth. So profitable happiness is the marriage of happiness in the context of business and personal profit. That's so important. That's the, and I mean, the fact that you're doing that work is just, again, it's, it's, if you haven't figured out or, you know, found the passion, found the happiness to be able to find that it opens life, it opens your life up. It makes you live at that higher level where, you know, you're, you're just, you the rest of your life is going to be better. And you're on a path that, you know, God, probably only a percentage of our population ever actually finds. Yeah. <laughs> that's I uh, reminds me of a, of a gif with there's a NBA player sitting on the sidelines that's like having a rough day or something and then mm -hmm. you can see the thought come into his head is like hey listen you're still in the NBA and he's like yeah 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 fair all right <laughs> I'm, I'm good I get to play a game for a living <laughs> like it's always that read that that reset of you know you're having a rough day like you know today I was I was picking up some stuff to make this the, the studio a little bit more cinematic mm -hmm. and you know a little bit stressed and then you know, I see a cart returner at uh, Target. Mm. I was like, ah, that's right. I'm still chasing my thing, even though I'm having a rough day. Like I could be working for minimum wage for a big corporation and, you know, just not be even here. Yeah. Um, it's all about perspective. Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful thing when you wake up and you realize, wow, regardless of what I've achieved um, or not achieved, I'm just living the happiest days of my life. Oh, yeah. Wow right now and um it's like even on this even on the most stressful days when somebody goes well would you like the corporate nine to five you know cubicle with yeah. fluorescent lighting you're like oh hell no no i'm doing just fine i'm this i'm is, great this is good and, and and especially when you real actually you know what maybe noah you're taking this to a whole nother place let me tell you what i think is is even greater than than happiness mm. I, I would say um that when you realize that no one is actually better than anyone else. That's that's what, one of my life's big aha moments is that I can now look at someone like you know my idol Prince or my other idol Michael Jackson or you know from the music industry. I can look at people who are so successful, and I can now just say they're not better than me. I'm not right. better than them. Like it's it's there's an equivalence, and it's simply called being alive. <laughs> that's very true. And that's that to that point, like, that, you know, we're in the happiness conversation. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if, you know, if you are returning cards to target or you are in the nine to five and you're happy, you you're winning, you're doing, you're doing it right. You're, you're having a fulfilled life. I, I always put my own kind of experience of life into, you know, it's, it's a podcast. It's how I kind of process information and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. through my lens of being an entrepreneur, but no, that's, that's, you're exactly right. Happiness is, just happiness and whatever you whatever you're choosing to do if you're having a good time with it good job you are living life correctly yeah absolutely no, totally <laughs> <laughs> so what are i always like to kind of bring actionable and tactical stuff uh to the podcast so like what are some ways that you help people deploy the profitable happiness or, or find it in the first place yeah. So the, the, the reason Profitable Happiness is kind of my parent brand is because that's really where all of us need to start any conversation about business. You can't start a conversation about business by saying what you're going to do. I am a an, an engineer. I am an electrician. It's like, yeah. So you're going to go do electricity and engineering for a while and then wake up and be unhappy? Stop. <laughs> 
go back to why you do what you do and start with that as Simon Sinek says, start with why. Right. That's kind of the, the same conversation. So I always start from the human element, from who are you, whom do you serve, where are the people you serve, and so on and so forth, asking those questions. Then we bring it down to, okay, what do you do and how do you do what you do for people? Yeah. Okay. So when we get down to the level of how you do what you do and so on, people usually need help converting their great ideas into finance, into business success, into money. Sure. And the way to do that is to have a business strategy and a bunch of tactics that can be implemented. All right. So now we're talking marketing. Now we're talking sales. Right. <laughs> so where I come in is I'm the guy who can see the whole thing. You know, not everybody does this. Like some people just only focus on marketing or whatever. But I actually look at the whole business from who you are as an individual. And we, we do psychology assessments about you, and the, the, your leadership style, whatever, all that stuff that's way up here in the human level. Then we come down to the business tier and then we talk about marketing and sales um, and then the execution of it, just the, 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 the rough, the rough, you know, <laughs> tackle and block of getting things done. And then you see your success. So I have a course called Profitable Happiness that is for um, either people leaving the, the executive world and wanting to be, uh, you know, entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs who exist. You know, some people have been aged out of, of the corporate world, sure. reached their 50s. They're still like, hey, I want to work, but like nobody's, nobody's hiring them anymore. So some of those folks want to become entrepreneurs and I help them navigate that whole minefield. Um, so that's one thing. Profitable happiness just covers that. But within that is Velocity Jam, which is my new book is called Social Velocity. And Velocity Jam, which we can talk about later, is really about the whole marketing context. How do you actually use marketing and sales to close business? That's the biggest challenge most people have. They've got a great idea. Everybody, right. Oh, yeah. They are geniuses. But it's like, I have no idea how to get customers. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I teach with Velocity Jam and Social Velocity. That's great. I mean, and I mean, let's let's dive into that because I think that's, you know, a super important thing. And I've been I've been an, an active participant in that and a customer, and I think it's fantastic. Um, essentially, you know, I I can you have such a great pitch and explanation of it. Tell us, tell us kind of what Velocity Jam does. Well, before I do that, let me tell you what social velocity is. Because yeah, velocity, yeah, yeah. Let's define yeah, yeah like it's the way the context of versus the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So social velocity really is my. I'm hoping that this is what I've left the world, what I've given the world. Right. If you remember, um, there was a time when Seth Godin, who actually was a, a guest on one of my podcasts, I saw that. Yeah, Seth Godin. Um, he looked at the world a, a while back and he said, you know what? This is all wrong. Marketing isn't right. He said, what you guys are doing, this advertising stuff is called interruption marketing. And because nobody wants to be watching their favorite show and then boom, this ad shows up and it's like, you don't want to see that. It's interrupting you. So Seth came up with a term called permission marketing. Mm. And it was so wildly successful. Everybody adopted it all over the world. And basically what it means is, Ask for permission first, like get people to opt into your email list. Then once they're in your list, then you market to them. Don't spam people who haven't said yes. Don't interrupt people on their TV show. So everybody loved that. Now, hey friends, it's your podcast buddy Noah Midman here. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about one of my passion projects, my clothing brand, Clothing for Creators. Roll the tape. If my life were a movie, the hero's big speech would end with, stop waiting, start creating. Because that's the drive behind my story. Like when I couldn't afford to finish film school. So instead I started my own production company and gave myself a trial by fire YouTube business degree. And it's not just me with these kinds of stories. There is this growing movement of passionate, creative, flow state writing, hustling, persistent creators and entrepreneurs that are taking the internet and the world by storm. 
Everybody told me I wasn't gonna be able to make any money as an artist. Now, 15 years later, I've worked on three continents. I do own my house, my shop, I'm booked out eight months ahead. I don't subscribe to being a starving artist. Creativity and I are very deep, dark lovers. I've just decided I'm just gonna make stuff. And even if it's not perfect, like it's getting made. You're gonna think that there's right answers and there's not. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Let's just throw dye on it and it'll look great. You don't need rules some old guy in a suit made up. You don't need anyone telling you that your voice doesn't matter. We are makers, creative types, side hustlers, doers. Why? Because we get shit done. The most important thing every single day is just to get your shit done. Just keep doing it, keep producing, keep creating, and as you do that, you're gonna start becoming the person that you want to be. Don't be scared to try. Commit, you can't half-ass do something. We're full-ass around here. So there's a film you need to make, a company you need to create, a voice you need to share, a product you know the world needs. Put all of yourself into it until anyone who has ever doubted you starts asking you for a job. Then you get to play for a living. You get to create community partnerships, collaborations, building bonds with people that like the same stuff you like. You get to live with your heart on your sleeve, a smile on your face, and a solid answer to when anybody asks, why do you do what you do? Sometimes you have to say fuck all the rules to get something that you really need to get out of yourself. You don't need the opinion of the old guy in the suit. You have to give yourself permission to just go. A little less conversation, a little more action. Clothing for creators. Go check out snowmanfilms.shop today. Hey there, fellow creatives. Conversations with Creators dives deep into the minds of successful filmmakers, artists, musicians, and all around awesome people. We are looking for some kick-ass sponsors to help us keep this show on the road. If you want to reach a tribe of dedicated listeners who are just as passionate about creating as you are, then look no further. Our audience is full of people who appreciate a good laugh and are always on the lookout for new ways to fuel their creativity. So, Let's team up and create some magic together. We'll work with you to make sure that your brand is showcased in the best light possible. And who knows, maybe we'll even become lifelong friends. Just imagine, years from now, we'll be reminiscing about the good old days when we first teamed up to take the world by storm. Send us an email at noah at snowmanfilms.net to say hey and get the ball rolling. Now back to the episode. <laughs> Fast forward, the internet shows up and everybody has tools to create content. At any time you pick up your, your phone and you can literally do a video that sells a million dollars, like put it on TikTok or yep. something. The world has gone crazy. And along with the power of technology comes the noise of everybody doing everything at the same time. And then you know what the result is? Permission marketing now becomes a bad thing because the minute you give someone your opt-in email, boom, <laughs> five Tide seconds. wave now. of emails. By the way, they're telling you how great you, they are and they want to sell you on their product and didn't you know you have a problem? It's right. like, rude, I, I, I just met you. <laughs> and then everybody's trying to get married on a first date and you yeah. can't do that. And so what's happened is that permission marketing has now become overcrowded and bad because of the way we do it. Because marketers ruin everything. Marketers are ruining everything. And so I've proposed that, and by the way, on my podcast, Seth Godin, I asked him about marketing, and he said that if you're not doing marketing the right way, you're just hustling. And I love that because really, that's the whole point of, of what I believe social velocity is, it's, it's hustling. Yeah. It's speed. You know, so, so if you think of speed and hustling, it's like you could be going really fast but not going anywhere. You could be on a treadmill or on a hamster wheel, right? Yeah. Going fast, but not going anywhere. Now, but if you look at the definition of velocity, it's when you're going in a specific direction mm -hmm. and you're moving. Without movement, there's no velocity. It's the, uh, it's the busy, busy versus productive. Exactly. And so I thought to myself, this would be a great analogy for helping people to understand that they need to get off that hamster wheel slow down and build relationships that move customers closer to you and that you move closer to customers through those relationships. And, and that's velocity, that's social velocity. And what that results in is basically you're using content. Content marketing is really what delivers the promise of social velocity. Um, if you keep on doing advertising, 
the minute you stop paying YouTube or Facebook, you're gone. It's gone, right? right? But when you focus on content marketing, it is an investment into the future. It is an investment. So people will see your content and come to you inbound without you having to keep pushing and selling all the time. So that's what social velocity is. And Velocity Jam is basically how we do it. So we get together and you've been a part of this. You've been in my beta group. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been great. For your great feedback. Um, we get together and there's a software and a community environment where we do content marketing right. We get feedback from each other. We see analytics that tell, that tell us if we're doing it right or not doing it right, and, and we can actually improve. And that's the whole point of social velocity and velocity jam. No, I, it's, I absolutely love it. And it's, you know, uh, what platforms is it on currently? It's LinkedIn and YouTube? It, right now it's LinkedIn and YouTube is very, very young right now. Yeah. We haven't really done much with it, but we have the capability. I've had my Snowman Films mm -hmm. uh, YouTube for many years, but I, you know, I it was originally a parkour channel. And yep. then I switched over to a bunch of business stuff and my viewers are just gone. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, I'll tell you what my son said about you. Yeah, please. He's like, dad, you actually have a cool friend. Like he, <laughs> he like, like he knows parkour. Did you know this? <laughs> like you, you, you've got some really widely seen, I don't know how many views, millions of views or something of you just jumping around, which is parkour. Of course, what, what do I know? But my son, <laughs> He's, he's 12. He's like, dude. I know. Yeah. Cause that's about the age I was, let's see. I, w I wish I had found it earlier cause it would have helped me, uh, grow up and, and come into my own a lot faster. Yeah. Uh, I found it around 17, I believe. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, the, the training, the mindset, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I've been in it for, you know, God, over 10 years now. I just went, I went to our, uh, I went to our little mountain gym the other on Saturday and did like five flips. And wow. now I've been, and I've been literally sore for like three straight days since. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you know, well, you I know, like 12 hours a day. At least you got the films. There are people who have done. Yeah, right. Right. It's documented. Okay. You've my double backflip outside is, is on you. It's, it's documented. It's there. Dude, like you're like a hero <laughs> and my son is probably one of who knows how many kids dreaming to be you back then right, right. <laughs> and yeah i mean it's it's cool it's got it's got wide reach and it's growing and it's uh it, unfortunately the there's not a ton of ways to make money with it at the moment mm -hmm. uh or or even i mean there's a little bit more now but when i was when i was coming up and trying to make a living with it um you know it just there wasn't that much uh maybe for the town i was in or whatever it was um, but no, it's what, what I was. And again, this is actually interesting again, because multi-passionate, what I found that was very lucky and just from me being interested was, you know, I had, I kind of came up with, you know, the filmmaking and action sports kind of came simultaneously for me. That was, you know, had a camera in my hand, loved doing flips and stuff and was making videos for that for many years. Yeah. Um, then I, you know, got really interested in the entrepreneur community and being, you know, the entrepreneur life and really educated myself. And I'm still, you know, you're constantly educating yourself, but like really found a passion for the business side of things and running that and figuring out, you know, different ways to make money that are non-traditional. And, uh, you know, that was where I was able to kind of move the business over uh, a couple of years ago from the action sports base where I wasn't doing a lot of business and kind of freelance to um, really, really helping with, you know, with the filmmaking and marketing capabilities and, uh, and then, you know, the coaching, all the years of making stuff, you know, DIY and just like with friends for fun really taught me like how to make stuff on a budget and how to, uh, you know, figure it out as you go. So I can now really honestly help people that are figuring it out as they go to be like, okay, here's, you know, I've been in that spot. Here's the answer for your next step. Try that out and see how it works. Yeah. Yep. No. And I mean the, the, and it's all content. It's all the, the marketing I think is. It's something that, especially a lot of artists and a lot of musicians and a lot of filmmakers even are not, they're not the best at marketing themselves. They really, they don't, I think, cause I think that merger of art, which let's call content art because it is good content is art mm -hmm. um, and marketing, which is the content marketing. I think the people that have mastered that, that understand the content game and that have, you know, all you need to do to make something marketing is have a call to action at the very minimum. Well, it's so know, simple. 
Yeah, but 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 you know, it's it's even it's even worse for the musicians and for mm. the the artistic people as you define. Because for one thing, I remember being in the music business and not knowing what the heck business right. was. It was all about music. It was about making it. I didn't have making music. I didn't have any concept of this, the business. Um, and so, so, so not knowing is one problem, but the second problem is not wanting to do the business, not wanting to share. I mean, think of the music industry model before. It was all about, hey, we're going to keep the artists a secret and we're going to make all this great music. And then one day on one occasion, we're going to launch that person to the, to the radio station, launch them to the video, and then they're going to become multi-billionaires next week. Right. How they basically did it. Right. Basically, that's what they did to blow up their artists or not blow up an artist and then right. fire them from the label. <laughs> but that model doesn't really work today. Today, you have to slowly but surely build up a fan base. Build the velocity. Back to the velocity. <laughs> Dude. They, that's exactly right. That's exactly that. And so, so um, you know, so nowadays people have to dig deep and say, you know what? I actually have to share what I've created. I can't hold it in. I can't keep it a secret. I've got to actually make it public because that is what I'm going to use to build this fan base. <laughs> yeah. The work is the process that exactly. I think that's, and I mean, this, this comes back to what we were talking about at the beginning where the happiness. Oh yeah. Oh my God. This is great actually, because I just realized as well, one of the big you know sayings that I always say is perfection is not a destination. It's a, it's a direction. Happiness is not a destination. It's a journey. Happiness is what you are building as you go. If you're not building on what makes you happy, you're going to have a really hard time if you do actually get the success of not of having it not be what you thought it was or having you know some other version of you that you've built up uh, be the public facing one. So it's going to be a really rough gig. So finding that you know, place where you're having a good time, you're doing what you're good at, and you know, you are building the velocity as you go where you are happy, you're creative, you're putting your stuff out. Um, that is that's the that's the path. And it's uh <laughs> it's funny too, because there's I mean, there's just especially in the marketing world, every pro everybody like promises the magic bullet of like, oh, I have the thing, I have the thing that's gonna make it's not it's it is no magic bullet to this. It is a process. It is building velocity. It is keeping at it long enough because this is a, this is a marathon. You're essentially sprinting a marathon. You are constantly creating, but it's cool. It's you know what a, what a place to live in, in terms of getting your message out there that you can constantly be putting stuff out and that that can turn to customers. Um, you know, just just the other day I was in a you know a clubhouse room just by answering or by asking a good question that sparked more conversation within the room, somebody hit me up on Instagram and uh, we just signed a contract and they're in for a coaching package. Like just by, just by being there and being in the, in the game and in, in the conversation and in the content, you know, in, in the creation game, yep. people find you. It happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, so what are in terms of, let's say some content marketing, what are some like, let's say like top five things for beginners to start off with um, that you find that are, is really good, maybe tactics or things to make, or, you know, let, let's, let's dive in a little bit on that. Well, if you're on LinkedIn, okay. Oh, so LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. If, we, if we're talking about LinkedIn, the very first thing you need to do is build a foundation upon which you can build relationships. What do I mean by that? Um, what I mean by that is, um, well, first of all, the, the, I call it the three R system. You build relationships and then you create reach for your content marketing. Okay. And then you, you analyze your results. Mm. So, so the, the relationship part, you need a foundation for that. What do I mean by that? People need to be able to come somewhere and look at you <laughs> and make a decision about you. Like, um, do I really want to hang out with this guy? <laughs> and that place is called your profile. Yeah. A lot of people don't recognize how important that profile is as the beginning of a good relationship or a bad relationship, right? So you got to fix your profile. So my first tip for anyone just getting into the content game on LinkedIn, actually on YouTube or Facebook as well, or Instagram, is make your profile an advertisement, a sales page, a call to action, 
a way of describing not your story, but the story of which your client is the hero, right? That's what your profile is. So that's step number one. So after you do that and other things to make sure that the relationship you, you're going to build will be great, then you start building that relationship using content. And here's the problem with content. Look, dude, Noah, I'm going to boast right now. I've actually written some pretty good songs that nobody has ever heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And nobody will ever hear because they're, <laughs> in my, they're in my upstairs on my computer. And it's like I'm not marketing them. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. Right? And that's the problem with content. Just like the music business, without the business, nobody will hear the music. The same way if you create content that has no reach, it's dead. And yeah. that's why you've got to invest not only in making content that builds relationships, but also invest in making sure people see it. And fortunately, all the algorithms of social platforms have one thing that they all want. They all want engagement. They mm -hmm. all want eyeballs because they need eyeballs on their advertising, right? It's like the old TV model back again. And so to get engagement, they encourage us to get people to see our content. How do they do this? They give us hashtags, right? So when you write a post, you put a hashtag, and that hashtag puts your thing in, the, in a collection of other hashtags that other people might be searching for. Boom, other people are going to engage with you. Or you make a post and you put in a tag. And that tag is a call to action for one specific person to come see your post and engage with you. Or you put it in a group. Or you put it in, in, a, in a message. I mean, these social platforms have done all these different things so that they can increase engagement. Yeah. But they're terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> they, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're good. They're good at all the other stuff. But they the tools are too hard to use. Yeah. Like, you know, most people don't even know how to use a hashtag. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. I've had to yeah. define hashtag to several people. Yeah. And so, so basically, you've got to know how to bring people, whether you do it by email or you pick up the phone or you use a hashtag, get people to see your post or else it's like you didn't put it on the radio station. Nobody's ever going to hear it. Or then, use Velocity Jam. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what Velocity Jam does. Does. I mean, that's that's essentially what it is. It's you yeah. know, these, these parties, jams of people Coming uh, commenting and engaging on each other's stuff so that all of us, and again, what's cool about this. So yeah, so you come together for a little, a specific amount of time, you comment and engage on each other's posts. You leave an actual insight, insightful, not just like cool posts, but like deeper than that. And, uh, you know, all the posts involved in this jam then get, you know, between 15 and 30 or whatever, uh, engagement hits. Yeah. And what happens after that is you, you get, you reach more people. Like I've, you know, you have that big boost on that one day and then two, three days later, I see that post still getting likes and comments yeah. because it has, that's how the algorithm works. It, 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 exactly. And, and, and again, I always start by telling people, this is how LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook, all of them, this is how they're built. They this is what an algorithm is. Yeah, this is literally want, how to make the algorithm happy engagement. Engagement. If you want people to hear about your stuff, then get people to hear about your stuff yeah. by bringing them together to see, invite people to see what you've posted. Don't just post it and, and, and hope that the LinkedIn algorithm is going to take it away for you. No, you have to bring people to your posts by advertising it, by telling people about it. And that's yeah. one of the things we do. We do not do anything inside the, the uh, LinkedIn or inside of Facebook or YouTube. We don't yeah. do any of that. That's yeah. against all their rules and we don't go near that you can't and you can't anyway it's it's not yeah, you, like, exactly but we don't do, but i like to see that here. because you know there are people who think because you know there's some people who use automations and bots and we don't yeah. do any of that stuff none of that but but here's the deal the third thing you need to do after you put your stuff in into play if you will and, and increase its engagement the third thing you need to do is look at the results okay so all the publicly available data about your posts, we show you that. If you had to do that yourself, you'd have to go uh, digging through, but it's public, it's available. Like, you know, yours is available to me. LinkedIn publishes it. YouTube publishes your views and your, yeah. you know, it's all there. Your views, yeah. likes, dislikes, comments, it's all that stuff. All there. So that stuff, we see that and we help you put that into the system so that you can see graphs and see 
analytics of exactly how your content is doing. Why? Because now you can know what's working and what's not working. And the minute you know that, you are dangerous because now you can actually get really good at your content marketing. No, because I mean, that's, that's, that is the, that's all I say to my, my coaching students is like on the phase four for course creation, which is promotion, which is your full-time job after you hit publish. Yeah. Um, the only, like it's, it's a game. Think of it as a game. It is a game on how well can my stuff do? What is working? What is getting engagement? What is getting all the likes and comments and all that stuff? What is not working? What, you know, that, that what's beautiful is that the market tells you if, you know, the, the comments and the, you know, their, their engagement rate will let you know exactly what, you know, once you've hit in your niche or in, you know, with your audience, what they're enjoying. And the game is to just do more of what is working. That, Cause again, you're all within stuff that you like doing already. There's nothing that, you know, you're like, Oh, I have to do this again. I'm like, no, if you don't like doing it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. But once you enjoy, and once you can figure out what works, double down on what's working and get rid of what's not working. Yeah. Um, just like, you know, it's, it's video works great. Uh, a lot of people, you know, that's, I always push for that. Um, because video is God, I think they say like something, it's gonna be something like almost 90% of web traffic in yeah. the next few years. Yeah, actually it already is. <laughs> wow. That's so, so, you know, this is why we're on, you know, the video podcast here on, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, either will be the audio version too, but I always go live because especially live video pops up on people's feeds. They get a notification. It's, it's, we're in the game right now of understanding the tools. Uh, StreamYard is, a, it's what we are on right now. And I love it because again, it lets you go live on multiple platforms. And when you go live, you get a higher percentage of chance that people, that the algorithm will notice and you know, your, your viewers will actually pop in and, and say, Hey, and engage. Um, so it's, it's, this is it. This is <laughs> this is the content game, and it is uh, the now and future of the internet. And it's just who can put out the best. You know, the people a lot of times that have had the hyper success, um, their content is the best. They're they've figured out what their audience wants and how to, you know, put it out there in a good way that people understand. And you know, they 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 get it. And it's just how fast can you learn and how how fast can you adapt and find the new thing and get to know the new thing that kind of the new feature or whatever that comes out on the platforms. And, um, it's exhausting at times, but again, you could also not be happy with what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I think one of, for me, one of the biggest, uh, paradigm shifts hmm. is to learn to do things, not for yourself, but for your intended audience. Yeah. Just a huge, I mean, it sounds easy, but it's not, especially if you're a creative person or a musician or an artist of some kind, because your creativity is so internal. It's like, I, I'm making something. Can I just please make it? <laughs> right. right. I just make what I'm making already? Dude. Yeah. But the truth is, nobody cares about what you're making. Like, it's hard to hear that. Nobody cares. They only care about what they want. And yeah. so for me... When I finally figured that out and I realized that I don't, it doesn't matter how great my song is, okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter unless it's doing something in somebody's life. Yeah. And so I didn't want to be doing all those, the music of making babies and all the stuff people talk about, the whole music industry or the church side of music. <laughs> like since I didn't want to do all that, I wanted to do motivational stuff. I ended up bringing my music into business, the business context, and it's worked. There you go. It for worked. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, hundred percent. Um, that's, I mean, that's a big distinction to make with all this. So I, and I think what you covered there is huge to kind of reiterate, which is, um, your content is not for you. It is for, if you are using it in a business way, if you're, if you know, creating a film to just make good art and make yourself happy and, you know, and, and get something, a story out of yourself that you need to tell, 100% do that. I've done that in the past. That's what a lot of my YouTube is. Like that those are great. But if you are creating content around the marketing side with the the intended idea of bringing customers in for wh whatever you're selling, your content needs to help them with something. It needs to provide them value with something. It is not uh I, I saw a great Gary Vee video a couple years ago that was like video content is not 
I went surfing in Maui and here was the trip and it looked cool. Thanks for following me. I'm such a cool person. It is what value can I bring to you? What can I help you with? Say, let's stay on the surfing thing. Are you interested in surfing? Do you want a tutorial on surfing or do you want to know about surf spots or do you, you know, what, what kind of helpfulness are you giving to your audience within your niche? And, uh, how good are, how good are you at communicating that? And can you give them a light bulb moment from a one minute video? Can you, you know, and if you can consistently guess who's going to be a customer eventually. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, we've covered a lot. This has been great. <laughs> we always do. I mean, we can always talk forever. Yeah, no, thank you for uh, for a great conversation. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um, you have a book down. You have something free for the audience, correct? You have a kind of a download for them. Um, we had a the conversation a while ago. What, what is your What is your current awesome thing that they can check yeah, out? Because um, um, our our beta is is closed, so we're no longer. I got on. in. All right. Yeah, you got in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the free beta is, is closed, but um, uh, you know we we do definitely have educational things that are free and things like that. So the best thing is just just go to drpele.com, d r p e l e dot com, and see whatever is on that front page, and it, it's free. Um, it's called the Profitable Happiness Checklist, I, I believe. Right. And then also, if you go to velocityjam.com, you can check that out and you could join if you want. And of course, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, reach out, get your profitable happiness going and uh, and get your get your life to where you want it to be and your business to where you want it to be. Thank you so much for joining me, man. This has been awesome. Thank you so much, Noah. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and find your profitable happiness and I'll see you next time. Awesome.